Sometimes I want to generate a random number in a program. Um, maybe I have a game and I want to roll a dice or I want to deal a card and I want them to be random selections um, so that the user can't guess at what they are. Well, I can ask the computer to generate what's called a pseudo-random number for me. Um, it's called pseudo-random because anything a computer is generating is based on some kind of algorithm. It's not truly random, uh, but it's random enough for our purposes of small games and that kind of thing. So to create a random number, um, there's a built-in function. It looks like this. It's R-A-N-D, and it will return a value as an integer that is in the range of 0 up to but not including 32,767. You may say to yourself, that is a strange number. Where did that come from? Well, it is the, um, at least used to be, the cap of the maximum um, size of an integer. So once I get this number, I can print it out um, and see what it is. So let me get, verify for you that this generates a number. So there's 41. Um, I can also store it inside a variable. That variable should, should be type int. Um, and should not be called R-A-N-D because that's the name of the function. Even if you are saying to yourself, I'm representing a random number, you can't name your variable rand because this function is named that. So I can store it in there. I don't know why I'm playing because there's nothing for you to see. And then I can do whatever I want to it later. Now, since this number is a weird range, again, it's zero up to this. Um, and that's not really useful. I need a way to modify it so that it is within a range I want. Okay. If I take this and I mod by some number, so let's say I'm modding by 5, what it will do is it will guarantee that all the numbers fall within the range of 0 up to but not including 5. So when I mod by 5, these are my potential values, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. It won't include that 5. Um, it will go up to but not it. So let me just have this. I'm actually going to I'm gonna write a little for loop so you can see it happen several times. And again, the only reason I'm writing this for loop is that you can see the effect of creating the random number multiple times to see that it is, in fact, random each time I run. Okay, so let me run this so we can see that it is within that range of values. Oh, I didn't see it out because I'm silly. Let's see out R. Okay. Here we go. 1, 2, 4, 0, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 4. So all within the range of 0 through 4. Okay, so if I just mod by something, I get from 0 up to but not including it. If I want to boost this range, let's say I add 1, it's going to shift that range of 0 through 4 up by 1 since 1 is added, so I'm never going to get a 0 out, but I am potentially going to get a 5. Okay, let's verify that that's true. 2, 3, 5, 1, 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 5. Yes, okay. So from 1 to a number is very easy to figure out. Um, there's actually an equation that generalizes this, um, and here's what the equation is. It is um, rand, and then you mod. And inside some parentheses, you write the highest number you want. I'm just going to write H minus the lowest number you actually want, plus 1. And then outside here, plus L again for low. In fact, that's a bad news because I can't tell the, one, the L and the 1 separate. So let me spell out that word. So again, it's modded by the highest minus the lowest plus 1, and then outside plus the lowest. So if I want a number from 3 to 6 put my low out here. I'm just going to let the computer do the math for me. So it's the highest I want minus the lowest I want plus one. I don't have to figure that out and simplify it. The computer can just do that math for me. Let's verify it worked. Four, six, five, three, four, three, five, 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 three, all within range. Awesome. So in general, this formula will work for you. It'll also work in those special cases I started with, one through whatever and zero through whatever. You just have to write the formula out and it will work. Okay. Um, but now I have another problem. Um, I'm going to cinch this back so it's just modded by three. And so now my values are going to be zero, one, or two. And I want to show you something. Okay. So let's, let's do this. We'll run it. Let's run it just five times. So it's easier to remember. Okay. Okay, so I got two, two, one, one, two. All right. Let's run it again. 
two two one one two. Okay, that's kind of weird. Do it again. Two two one one two. Um, uh oh, I'm generating the same random numbers every time. That's not going to work if I'm writing something for like a casino. Now people know how to guess the sequence. They can cheat at the game. Um, so if you don't take any further action with um, Rand, then you are always going to generate the same sequences every time your, your code runs. So there's an extra step to make that not happen. And the first thing you have to do is bring in the time library or C time. Okay. And then at the very beginning of main, you have to do what's called seeding the random number generator. And here's what it looks like. It's srand time zero. Okay. And remember before I said these are pseudo random numbers. They're generated with math. Um, this line makes the sequence of math that's applied start with a different value every time. Um, because of that, I need to make sure this is up here only once in a program and it doesn't get called twice within the same second or it will start repeating the numbers again because within a certain second of time, because time zero gets me a particular second, um, it would generate the same sequence of numbers. So if my program runs really fast and it does several operations within the same second, um, this guy would return the random number sequence back to the beginning um, and repeat itself over and over again. So to avoid that scenario, I'm just going to make sure that when I'm using random numbers, this is just the first line inside main. Then I don't have to worry about it. Don't let it get trapped in a loop. You don't write it further down. You don't repeat it anywhere. Just once in the program. And now, just to verify, my sequence is 01101. Let's just do it one more time to make sure it's different. 20110. Awesome. Okay. So that's how you make use of random numbers in a program. If you just want one number, you don't loop. You simply run without a loop, and it will get you one random number. There's a zero.